Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Tariq here from uh, smartbytrainers.com. So Tax updated a bunch of trainers this year. They updated the Flux with a Flux S and a Flux 2. The Flux 2 is kind of an updated version of the Flux S and the Flux S is an updated version of the Flux that they introduced a couple of years ago. This kind of reminds me with Apple when they updated the iPhone 8 and introduced the iPhone 10 at the same time. So it's kind of an update to an update. Anyway, we have the Flux S today and I have been riding it for the past few weeks and I'll tell you everything you need to know about the Flux S. So Tax updated the Flux S with better internals, support for long cage derailers, and made it quieter and better accuracy. So the Flux support up to a maximum of 1500 watts, putting it in line with other mid-range trainers and up to 10% slope, that's on the lower end of the uh, mid-range trainer line. And the claim accuracy is less than plus minus 3%. And the flywheel weight is about 15 and a half pound. It does come with a 130, 135 millimeter adapters. Other adapters are also available, uh, but you need to purchase them separate. Cassette compatibility, Shimano and SRAM, eight to 11 speed. A Campy cassette is available or a Campy body is available and sold separately. And tax dropped the price down of the Flux S to $750. Now, if you're wondering the differences between the Flux S and the Flux 2, well, let's take a look at the table and see the differences. So then the, the first thing you'll notice is the Flux 2 does have the support more power up to 2000 watts it does have a little bit of a better accuracy slope is a lot better 15% compared to 10% with the flux s the flywheel is a little bit heavier and it does come with a 142 and 148 millimeter adapters and the overall weight is a little bit heavier just because of the flywheel weight the price of the flux 2 is $900 so you're talking about $150 saving when getting into the Flux S. So when you take the Flux S out of the box, you need to assemble the legs. And the assembly is pretty simple. Everything that you need is included in the box. It took me about a few minutes to put it together. Uh, then you need to provide your own cassette. And like I said before, it is compatible with eight to 11 speed cassettes. Once you install the cassette and set up everything, you need to connect it to power and then pair it to the tax utility app. And once you pair it to the tax utility app, the first thing you wanna do is just make sure you have the latest firmware installed. If you don't have the uh, if you don't have the latest installed, it will prompt you to install it. And after that, ride the trainer for about 10 minutes just to warm it up and then run that calibration. And since this is a direct drive trainer, you only need to run that calibration once a week or every 10 days or so. So as far as the noise, just like I do with all my other videos, I'm gonna run the trainer at 20 miles per hour and then increase that to 30 miles per hour. And the reason I do 20 miles per hour is this is the speed that you're probably gonna be staying at for most of your workout, whether you're in sim mode or erg mode. With this trainer, you're probably gonna be doing a lot of your workouts, and especially if in, in, in erg mode, you're probably gonna be doing them in the small range. So your speed will probably be around that 15 miles per hour range. So that 20 miles per hour is gonna be a little bit over, but I will let you listen to the trainer at 20 miles per hour and see how it sounds. So this is 20 miles per hour. So I'm gonna increase the speed to 30 miles per hour just to let that flywheel spin and see how loud it gets. So at 20 miles per hour, I thought it was pretty good. Not noisy at all. And uh, this is a speed they're gonna be staying at most of the time in air mode or in sim mode. Uh, especially in air mode, if you go to the lower rank, you're gonna be at probably 12, 15 miles per hour. And for me to get it up to 30 miles per hour, I had to put out 350 
close to 400 watts just to get that flywheel spinning at 30 miles per hour. And one thing about speed here, uh, the speed the trainer reports is gonna be different what you see on the screen if you're riding a course, for example, on Zwift. Zwift takes your power and translate that into speed based on the terrain that you see on Zwift. So you might be going down a hill on Zwift going 50 miles per hour and the trainer flywheel might be only going three miles per hour, five miles per hour or not moving at all. So just keep that in mind, not because you're seeing a speed on Zwift, that doesn't mean that's the speed of the flywheel. And that whole speed thing deserve a whole video on its own, but I just wanted to mention that just so you can keep that in mind. Okay, as far as accuracy, I tested the trainer against my power to max crank base power meter and P1 pedal shut and compare the data from all three power meters. So here's a ride I did. This is an actual race I did in Zwift. And as you see, all three power meters are very close together within one to 3%. So it was within range and everything just looked good. The flux was a little bit under reporting about one to 3%, but other than that, it was very close and consistent with my other power meters. One other thing I noticed, it wasn't catching up fast enough when going off for sprint or VO2 type intervals. As you see here, it was off by about 6% or so. Now in ergmo, the same thing, it was within range and it was quick to respond. So here's a workout that I did, a 10 minute interval workout. And as you see, all three 10 minute intervals were within target. We're just within about one to two watts from my P1 pedal or power to max. And the other thing I noticed with the flux, it was very quick to respond in erg mode to interval changes. And to show you what I'm talking about, here's a workout I usually do on trainer road just to test how quickly the trainer respond to intervals. And this is the last three uh, intervals, those are 10 seconds on and 10 seconds off. And as you see, the trainer was responding very, very fast. Now on the uh, rest intervals, it had a hard time bringing me down to my target watts. And I had that target watts set pretty low. Uh, below 100 watts just to see if the trainer can get me there and it had a hard time bringing me be below 150 watts even though i was on the smaller rank but that is the same thing they had with the previous flux so uh, trainers with a flywheel like this usually tend to have a hard time bringing you down to very low watts so just keep that in mind if you're a smaller rider you might want to adjust the gearing to get you to a lower watts Okay, so the Flux S at $750, that is a pretty good entry-level direct drive trainer that is fully compatible with Zwift and Trainer Road or any other app that supports ANT plus FEC or smart Bluetooth connectivity. So if you're looking to get into the direct drive trainer at $750, that is pretty good price. The only thing about this trainer is the legs. You cannot fold the legs for storage or if you wanna move around, it's gonna be a little bit hard to do that with this trainer. All right, this is all I have. I'll have the uh, Flex 2 and Neo 2 review coming up in the next few weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you find this review helpful, uh, hit the like button. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.